Welcome today to the Hobo and his girlfriend webcast. My girlfriend and I had to go to work. I look extra hoboish today. I haven't put my contacts and I have my glasses on. And today I'm doing our Raw and SmackDown combined podcast. A little bit about the WWE over the past week. Um, I'm going to be looking a little distracted because I'm also listening to the greatest Royal Rumble ever. So if you see me kind of look down and scribble stuff down, I'm just taking notes for a future show. So, but today it's going to be a fairly quick one. We're just going to go, just going to go over Raw and SmackDown. Probably about 20 minutes or so. Again, please like and subscribe. Feel free to email at hobo and girlfriend at gmail.com. Like and subscribe, and you could get a little shout out on YouTube. Also, like to shout out a little bit to Southern Pro Lucha Libre. Yes. Hopefully, we'll see one of their matches on stream soon. Um, again, a little programming note. Unfortunately, I'm still suffering my punishment. Yeah, about 60 more days, I think, until I can live stream. Because if not, I'd actually be live streaming my reactions to the Greatest Royal Rumble while I'm doing work at home. So again, every so often, I'm going to be kind of phasing in and out, getting some stuff done, working, because collecting aluminum just doesn't pay the bills all the time. So it should be an interesting show. I'll kind of keep you updated as I hear things. Kind of interrupt myself. But again, going into Raw, this was this was kind of fun. Um, started off melancholy. Un un unfortunately, the great Bruno San Martino died. Which is a quick moment of silence. And again, Bruno San Martino, a great wrestler. I think he held the belt for almost seven to eight years straight. Yeah, that's never going to happen again. again. Again, Raw started out really good. It's, 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 it started out with a Bruno San Martino tribute. Went right into a Brock's, uh, Brock and Lake Reigns promo. Very simple. Roman still gets booed, though. I, don't, I, I think, again, from the past video my girlfriend and I did, should be on now. Again, like and subscribe to that video. I think Roman Reigns is going to go over only because Brock's is going to be part-time. It's in a cage. I don't know what's going to happen. But again, it was a really simple promo. Just say, I'm coming home with that belt. Stare at Brock and left. Ooh, I think the first match is going to be the Triple H John Cena match. If I hear it right. So that should be interesting. Um, again, to start, you had, again, this is going to be kind of quick, and I, I'm kind of distracted a little bit doing five things at once. So, the first match of the night, we had Bobby Roode versus Elias. <laughs> Elias came out, couldn't even start his song, because he starts to strum the guitar. It was glorious! Now, this led to a good match. It was really fun. I mean, these two are great performers. Uh, it's your cheeseburger match. I mean, the crowd still pops for the glorious. It was a good match. It's good back and forth. Elias won. He countered the glorious CDT. It was good. It was a cheeseburger match. And a, a lot of promos in, in this card, I think, leading up to the greatest Royal Rumble, which I'm listening to. And the first match is the John Cena Hunter Hearst Helmsley match. And I had John Cena, Wall Cena wins. I think it's going to be kind of one of his last matches in WWE. Again, I do apologize. I am looking extra hoboish today. It's been a busy morning. Um, so then you have a Woken promo. Again, this is really good because it's already playing off the, the light where Matt Hardy, Woken Matt Hardy, yes, is the light side and, of course, Bray Wyatt. Is the dark side of the Woken universe. So it's the Ascension versus Woken Matt Hardy and Woken Bray Wyatt. Matt is still just so entertaining in the ring. I mean, I just based on that, it's a surf and surf match. 
I forget if it was Connor or Victor did a little flip over him, and he's like, wait, stop. That was wonderful. Yeah. Again, it was, it was, it was entertaining. And it was a good match. Even though the Ascension are just now glorified jobbers, it, it was fun. It was entertaining. I, I felt happy. Gets, gets the surf and turf. Again, there's still great tag team action by both teams. It's just really fun. Then this leads to the Sammy and KO show. This is good. I don't know why they didn't do this on SmackDown, although I still think that El Generico, Kevin Steen, would, would have been equally as good. Oh, John Cena just came. Kind of getting the WrestleMania entrances. So that, that's pretty cool. Um, again, awesome. I don't know why they didn't do it on SmackDown. You could have done the El Generico, Kevin Steen thing. This, this guy actually have been better than that. So I stand corrected. Um, <laughs> he introduced Kurt Angle and just spent minutes running down Kurt Angle. And Kurt Angle looks like he's thoroughly enjoying himself. He pulled out a kitty lawn chair, one of the small old-fashioned lawn chairs for if you're as old as I am. It's the aluminum with kind of the alternating web and stripes. I don't even know they make those anymore. So again, it was really fun. There you have the Mistraj, and they came out twice on Raw. First time they came out hoping to be part of the new Shield with Seth Rollins. They Put up, put up their fists to kind of join him, and then he's like, eh, not, not happening. It's like, good luck, guys. And the second time, later on, they tried to too sweet and form the new club, and it was funny because Finn Balor just said, okay, that's better now. So again, it was fun. It is what it is. They're just, they're just looking for a new leader. Then you had Titus Worldwide versus Ziggler and McIntyre, and for the most part, this was again, it was fun. It kind of highlighted everything. This is a cheeseburger match. I was entertained. Drew McIntyre looks utterly amazing. Dolph Ziggler looks like he's enjoying himself finally. Tyus Worldwide's doing good. Again, Tyus Worldwide, Drew McIntyre went over, of course. It was good. It was fun. Then next, oh, we had Chad Gable come out as a singles competitor, talked talked to Kurt Angle a little bit, Jinder Mahal, kind of mocked him, called, called him the Nicholas characters, and he looks like he put on some muscle on a headband. This was a good match. I mean, both of these are great workers in the ring. They're making Jinder Mahal be the overconfident heel, and this time the Singh brother did not get beat up. At least now. We'll see what happens on SmackDown. But the thing, the thing was really there just as a distraction. Ginger is playing the good, conf, over, overconfident heel. And it's a really good role. It was a cheeseburger match. Gable won because he reversed the Coloss into a pin. And hey, it doesn't make Ginger look weak so much, but it's just like, hey, he's just overconfident. An absolution promo really... Ruby Riot can still cut a great promo, even though she should be Heidi Lovelace, because Heidi Lovelace is a better name. It's not Ruby Riot, it's Heidi Lovelace. I still can't understand what Sarah Logan's saying. She has to lose that country twang, because eh, eh, it doesn't do it for me. The thing she says, I'm like, I don't get this. But again, I live in Daytona Beach, more civilized part of Florida, almost. Then you had Samoa Joe did his iPhone promo. Oh, got Triple H down, can't see me. Oh, uh -oh all Cena wins. Hopefully it gets better. I don't want to see the five moves of, of death again. Go shoulder tackle, shoulder tackle, back body drop, five knuckle shuffle, and AA, five moves of death. If I can predict it, you know something's wrong. Oh, let's see here. So this is going pretty good. 
let me get this one thing done. I'm gonna do apologize a little bit. I'm trying to do points and things at the same time. So now it's a test. Yeah, it is what it is. It's it's never gonna be that great of a match anyway. I don't I guess they have it just for the draw. It was a pretty full stadium though. So again, that just started off, and again, I like distracted. I'm trying to take notes. I know, kind of dead air time. But we'll get, we'll power through this. Again, it's just, I don't know. I'm the, Cena's, I'm never a fan of him. But again, to get back, then you have the No Way Jose versus Baron Corbin. Baron Corbin said, I'm not into this. You go out there. No Way Jose comes back and just gets a beatdown from Baron Corbin. It was what it was, just a beatdown. Then you have the Miztraj versus Finn and Seth. It was, it was good. I, mean, I can't complain about it. It was kind of a ham sandwich match. The Miz Trash are just sort of trying to find themselves. Again, they came up. Again, they tried to be recruited by both Seth and, Seth and Finn. This is what it is. It's a decent back and forth. Again, a ham sandwich. This is probably the low, low point of, of the whole night. And then it ends actually with a surf and turf match, which is odd because I'm, I'm normally not a big fan of these 10 women or 10 men. Kind of smash them all together matches. It was good. I'll tell you what, though. Logan's pop-up headbutt. That looks vicious. Um, every wrestler kind of had their spot. Nia Jax did a suicide dive from the apron. I look terrified. I think the other wrestlers look terrified. And even she looked terrified doing it. Because right, she's got big. She's like, oh, my God, please catch me. Um, Matt, Maddie was working in an injury to her knee after she had someone in the Mickey James in the sharp shooter. Logan came out, chop blocked her knee, just kind of saw the whole injury. Mickey James saw that Natalia was wounded and like a shark going to sense his blood. Started to go after the knee of Natalia. With a whole, all the rest of the women outside the ring, except for Natalia was on the opposite side of the ring. Everyone else was on the other side. Mickey James kind of gets in, attacks Natalia. That brings out Ronda Rousey. I don't know where they're going to go with this. I hope they don't do something stupid. I have a real fear that they're going to do something dumb between Ronda Rousey and Natalia. We'll see. That was raw. Again, it was pretty good, except, except for one or two instances. Not bad. Notes. Gone. Matches are still going. I don't know. It's an okay match again. It's a, it's a, it's a Cena match. Triple H. John Paul Levesque. Again, it's kind of getting old, so you never know what's going to happen there. Get this stuff out of the way. Again, just kind of a long, drawn out match. Nothing much is happening. They just had to test the strength, exchange of punches. Yeah. Again, I'm on my punishment, so I can't show it. I can't live stream for, I think, 50 or 60 more days. Well, let's get to SmackDown. So SmackDown started, it was really good. Started with, them, again, a great Bruno... Tribute. I'll give the WWE credit where it's where it's due. When someone from the WWE family passes away, they they do spend that extra time to kind of make sure that that they're remembered, really in a good way. And they also, I think, in on Raw, <coughs> tried to sell or at least promote the Bruno kind of biography, which, by the way, is very good. I think I saw. I think they had one on A and E. I'm still waking up, so I need a little raspberry Coca-Cola there. 
which has which is good. Very it's on, on the higher end, but it's good. It's different tasting. But I don't like coffee. But there you have Miss TV starts off. He still knows how to get the audience involved. Really fun. He calls out Daniel Bryan. It almost seems like it's a face turn for Miz, but I don't, I don't know what's going to happen. Miz is really good about that, by the way. He's really good at swerving the audience, where he's going to think one, one thing's going to happen, then he does the other thing. Good job, Miz. And when you've been in the business as long as he has, I guess he's learned to pick up some things. But Daniel Bryan does not count, but instead, they cast us. Uh-oh. Came out in a suit. Just really starts to run down Daniel Bryan. Takes control of Miz TV. Good segment. Um... Then we have Daniel Bryan showing his tech backstage. This led to a women's tag team match, and I really kind of do hope that they bring back the women's tag team belt. So I want to say, again, it shows my age. I think the Jumping Bomb Angels were the last ones that I remember having the belt. Jeez, I'm old. But this led to the iconic to do great job in the ring. And since the better half is not here, Peyton Royce and Billy Kay have big boobies on TV, but when you see them in live, you're like, wait a second, what does the TV do? They do say the TV adds 30 pounds to it. I guess for women, it's all up there, and guys, it's just a lot on our waist. I don't know. In face. Again, it was it was a good they spent they, they just run down everyone. Oh! Charlotte beat... Uh, they did the logical logic progression step. If Charlotte beat Asuka, and Carmella beat Charlotte, and we help Carmella win. That means we're better than Asuka. So it led to a tag team, Becky Lynch and Asuka versus the Iconics. It was fun. It was a good cheeseburger match. Really, I think Becky was just there just to be beat up. Asuka looked strong. Becky was there to be beat on and eat the pin. The Iconics are great. Hey, this is a cheeseburger match. This was really fun to watch. AJ Styles, who, by the way, looks like he's now enjoying himself thoroughly. Now that the club is back on SmackDown with him, I mean, it just looks like he's having fun. He came out of Shane McMahon's office or Paige's office. He just had a big smile on his face. He's like, we're going to have a six man tag team. I'm going to finally get Nakamura. So nothing else is going on during the match. Again, I'll try and, try and keep you updated. Up. About that a little bit as we go through this this one podcast. Again, I'm still in punishment. I can't do much about that. Just have to wait my turn. What can I say? Then you have Aiden English. Oh no! Then you have the contract signing. Actually, my contract signings were this important and and as dramatic as normally. I just give you a piece of paper, sign this, give it back, get out of my office. But again, Carmella. She's tiny because that belt is. I don't think she can tighten it anymore and still, like, kind of just hangs on her waist. I don't know why they made the women's belt so big. Just looks. I mean, it, it looks great. Don't don't get me wrong. It just looks so big compared to the actual size of the women. Uh, it was a contract signing. You know what's going to happen. The table's going to go around. Again, it is what it was. It was a table sign. Oh, the STF by John Cena. Triple H isn't going to tap out. I hope not. That would be... Uh, you never know. You're probably going to eat the pin later, but... Ooh, Triple H gets out. Spine Buster. Again, it's going to be a wall Cena wins. I have any English, any English at the door saying, saying no interviews. I think that was Dasha trying to get an interview with Shinsuke Nakamura. Aiden English sticks his head out. He looks, he look, he, he's, he's doing good. They're actually using him at least. More so than when he was a VOD villain. Although the VOD villain's New Day segment was kind of funny. Made me smile at least. Then you have Naomi with the Usos. It's going to be, I think Naomi's going to team up with the Usos against the Bludgeon Brothers. She's, I don't know if she's going to be a wrestler now or just kind of a wrestler valet for them. We'll see. This led to, again, the Bludgeon Brothers versus the Usos. It was pretty good. Um, a little good back and forth. Kind of started off as a squash match. <laughs> but then Naomi comes out. 
really just dis- really distracts Rowan. Because one, there's the black light and her whole outfit glows. And she twerks, does the booty wiggle, the booty bounce. And I think every male was distracted, including Rowan. Right to the dismay of Jimmy Uso, who did come out of the middle of nowhere and hit him with like a flying, like look like a video game flying kick you would see out of some old karate movie. That's my alarm going off telling me I better wake up because it's past 12 o'clock. Again, that was kind of, it was, was fun. It was what it was. It's a ham sandwich. It could be bumped up to a cheeseburger match, though, if they continue this angle with Naomi. Please tease me just a little bit, but have me wanting more. Then we have Shelton Fedrin versus, whoa, not Jeff Hardy. But Randy Orton, Randy Orton, he pulled he pulled the switch from last time. Jeff Hardy came out, kind of stopped mid stage, kind of looked around, said, "What's going on?" Randy Orton music. Oh, pedigree. Two. Ah, oh, Cena kicked out. Lol, Cena kicks out. Cena's winning. Lol, Cena wins. So again, you have Shelton Benjamin versus Randy Orton. <laughs> this is funny because Neil Singh came out in a mask. It's like, wait a second, that was like a masked Bollywood boy. So again, it was it was fun. It was a cheeseburger match. Shelton Benjamin, Randy Orton. That's that's a good match. I think eventually they're going to put the U.S. Championship on Shelton Benjamin. So again, if you watch the predictions, my girlfriend and I did last night, have Jeff Hardy retaining the. U.S. Championship belt versus Jinder Mahal. Ooh. No. Kick out. Ooh, SCF is locked in. No, don't tap. Lol, Cena wins. Lol, Cena wins. Oh, wait, I do want him to tap out. What am I saying? We'll see. Oh, reversed it. Good. Well, we'll see how this goes, depending how long the match is. It's actually gone on for quite a while already. That's that's interesting. I didn't think it would take as long as it would. I didn't even think this would have been the uh, the opening match. Cena, two. Cena wins. Lol, Cena wins. So I guess I was okay. And again, not the best, but yeah. And this is part of the greatest Royal Rumbles going going on my podcast. Again, I don't have live stream capabilities yet. I'm still on my punishment phase. So I'm, I'm kind of distracted a little bit. But there's only, I think, a couple more segments to go. I'm going to wrap this up so it'll probably be under a half hour. Kind of nice and short. And no, I cannot show you the actual match because, well, one, I can't live stream. And it would probably just kick me off YouTube, and that would be bad. That would be no no more hobo. Bad hobo. Go back to the streets, hobo. Go back to the place under your bridge. Get more aluminum. Yes. So, again, this leads. Again, Shelton Benjamin won. Um, after a single thing tried to interfere, he's just there to eat RKOs. I think they're going to push Shelton Benjamin probably for the U.S. Championship. Probably not backlash, but whatever is after backlash. So it'll be fun and entertaining. Again, this led to a New Day segment. Sheamus and Cesaro came out. This is going to start off a really fun feud for both of them because I think they had a little bit of this. And they were both on Raw. So, so it should be really good. There's, of course, the pancakes. And the bar, bar, bar. And, and the New Day looks confused by what, what bar was. 
do you do this? No, no. Oh, whatever. So again, it was fun, entertaining. You have a Daniel Bryan interview say he's he's going to get big cast. I think a backlash. Also, he's Daniel Bryan is going to be in the alt um, in the in the greatest Royal Rumble. So wait, let me write this down. Wall Cena wins after two AAs. Just like I thought would happen. Wall Cena wins. Then we have the six man tag. This is the main event. You have the wow, 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 Bullet Club. Boy, live. Come on out. And then you have. AJ Styles. So great are those. And AJ Styles just looks like he's loving it now that he's back with the club. Basic on Rusev Day with Rusev and Andy English and Shisuke Nakamura. This was a surf and turf match. And if this was a pay per view match and they gave it a lot more time, this could have been a filet mignon match you could have seen for free on TV. It was really good. It was almost like a, like a New Japan, like a, a New Japan pro wrestling. Versus WWE feud. You have the Bullet Club. Again, obviously New Japan. Versus Rusev Day and Shinsuke Nakamura. Again, kind of chaos and WWE. Rusev would have been great in chaos. And so would have Aiden English have been back in the day. Maybe that's why they're doing that. The old Bullet Club versus chaos. Great back and forth. I mean, the, the club and AJ look strong throughout. Um, in English, just like again, he was there. He's there to take the, the brunt of everything. I don't think Shinsuke got much in really until the end when he started just delivering out Kinshasa's and low blows. Again, it was Rusev Day. I, um, not Anderson, but Gallows actually hit the pin this time after Kinshasa at the back of the head, which looked vicious by Shinsuke. Again, it was really fun. Everyone got kind of got the spots in. Oh, a, a good moment. Aiden English had AJ Styles in in the reverse chin lock. He says, "You're not going anywhere." Singing to him while wrestling. That's that's just that's that's actually pretty good. I, again, it makes me smile, and it makes me smile. It's, you know, it's going to be a cheeseburger. Again, if this went on for about 10 more minutes, you would have had your free filet mignon match. Um, so again, Gallo's lost after taking a Kinshasa to the back of the head. Then, of course, Shinsuke Nakamura just then, of course, AJ Styles comes in, starts beating up Shinsuke Nakamura. And so Shinsuke Nakamura low blows him and tries to deliver Kinshasa, except for Carl Anderson. Takes the b -b 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 bullet, or in this case, the k -k -k Kinshasa for AJ Styles. This is really going to cement the Bullet Club. Ooh, are we going to see Bullet Club versus New Bullet Club versus New Chaos? Yes, I hope so. So that's all from the ho from Hobo Tom. My girlfriend is on her photography job, so hopefully she'll join us. For the next podcast that that I do, please like and subscribe. Leave a comment. You leave a comment, you will get a shout out on YouTube, so you can show all your friends. Also, feel free to leave a email at hobo and girlfriend gmail.com. Again, final little shout out: Southern Pro Lucha Libre coming to a town near you. Hopefully, Daytona Beach. Um, a couple of programming notes. I know. I think which match is now. Let me kind of focus a little bit more on this, maybe. Or are they still like kind of doing commercials for the WWE Network, which is what they tend to do a lot of for some reason. <laughs> I got like fans with signs. I am a mark. Oh, Cedric Alexander versus Kaliso. This should be kind of fun. Let's see here. Let me double check. Yeah. Yep, it is those two. So that should be good. So again, please like and subscribe.
hopefully after in about fifty more days, I'll be able to live stream. And I'll probably have postings up from the world's greatest Royal Rumble later tonight. Might catch me eating some pizza. Because it is a red wine Friday, please enjoy your red.